just make sure we're there. Are we good? Good. <clears throat> All right, everyone, welcome back to the Pain Free Golf Performance Podcast. Today, we're joined by a special guest, someone that we, uh, we highly regard because we work so closely with him. I want to introduce Neil Reedy, who is the head PGA professional at Cobblestone Creek Country Club. Neil, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it, man. So, Neil, tell us a little bit about kind of your background history, maybe kind of, you know, how you got into golf, where you've maybe worked in the past before finally settling at Cobblestone. Great. Yeah. Um, I was a baseball player growing up, and when I was about, thir- I think, 13 or 14, I tore my rotator cuff, couldn't throw a ball anymore. So, huh. uh, you know, my dad was always a golfer, and, uh, you know, you got to think about 1993, 1994, this is pre-Tiger. Sure. Uh, golf literally wasn't that cool still, if you will. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at that time, golf was still old guys and funny pants and all that fun stuff. So, right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, when I, when I basically had to leave baseball, um, I just started playing golf with my dad, and I just fell in love with it. Um, and fortunately, I was kind of a natural hit in the golf ball. I kind of picked it up sure. really quickly. I think some of my baseball transferred yeah. over to it. And um, I just basically sound to sum down, you know, I was fortunate growing up to, uh, you know, we, we were members of the private club and the, we had just had a new pro uh, that came out and it says I was starting John Fowler, who's one of my dearest friends to this day and was a big junior golf guy and just kind of put his arms around me. And, and uh, you know, it, again, with my dad being a golfer, it was, uh, it was just a, a great thing for me. And uh, I was fortunate to get kind of pretty good pretty quickly. Uh, sure. You know, it's uh my mom would drop me off in the morning. My dad picked me up at night. And I just lived there, hit a thousand balls a day and played way more. And uh, like I tell a lot of my students when they see me at a golf ball, it's a misspent youth in the driving range, basically what I had going on in my, in my world. Uh, so yeah, it's just, you know, it's, I, I just have such a passion um, for the game and uh, it's, it's for, fortunate for me it's translated into my work environment, you know, yeah. and I get to come to a, a, a beautiful golf course every day with great people and, um, prior to coming to Cobblestone, um, when I graduated from Lemoyne, I went to, you know, West Palm Beach, Florida with the thoughts of turning professional. That was my goal. I was playing the PGA Tour. Yep. Uh, you go from being a kind of a big fish in a small pond in upstate New York to a very, very, very small fish in a very, very big pond in West Palm Beach, Florida, Palm Beach County, the kind of the home of golf, if you will, sure. in our country. Yeah. And um, after a few years of playing, I, it just got to be where, you know, I realized this wasn't ever going to be good enough. I just didn't, I didn't see myself investing the 10 or 15 or 20 years you have to invest to kind of get out there. Um, sure. A lot of guys I played many tours with, I just see now, you know, on, on the, uh, on the corn Ferry tour or the PGA tour, uh, which is, I'm, I'm so happy for them, but you know, they put in tremendous time and effort to get to that point. Right. Um, so that's why I decided that, you know, playing professionally wasn't right for me that, you know, the business side of it being PGA professional, is something I was always interested in. Uh, went to work at Barrel Lakes Country Club in West Palm Beach and uh, a great club there. And I was fortunate to where uh, the director of golf, Kevin Murphy, uh, got the head professional job at MacArthur Golf Club in, in Hope Sound, Florida. MacArthur is a, just a, you know, a wonderful, wonderful facility. And I was able to, to transition with him as a senior assistant. And it kind of you know, went off from there. And um, during my time at MacArthur, Craig Harmon, who was a former head professional at Oak Hill Country yeah. Club, was our director of instruction at MacArthur. And I had taken lessons from Craig growing up you know, upstate New York and Craig and I just got a, you know, even a stronger relationship and he offered me a job at Oak Hill in the summer. So for a few seasons, I did Oak Hill in the summer and MacArthur in the winter, which was a pretty good deal back then. Good by the way. Good. <laughs> it didn't, it didn't, uh, I liked it. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> for sure. And, <laughs> um, but I was fortunate um, at Cobblestone, you know, the Cobblestone job opened up and I had, uh, I had known our then president and now president Jay Barber, you know, through my time at Oak Hill and I called him and said, I'm so interested. And I was able to interview with some other really great professionals. and was fortunate to get the job in 2011. I've been here since. Unbelievable. That's a great story. Thanks, and man. I think you, your, your story of you know, moving from upstate New York to Florida, I yeah. think a lot of people do that, right? And you know, when you have aspirations to, to play golf, you want to be in, a, in a, obviously a, a warm weather area that you can play golf all year round. And you know, sometimes I think things happen for a reason. And obviously, we're very, very grateful to have you guys uh, have you at Cobblestone for sure. So um, ultimately, when it came to, let's say, transitioning from trying to play professionally to instruction, was that something that was like a natural fit for you? Did you feel like that was something that kind of you just kind of gravitated towards and, and knew at some point in time you would want to transition to? Or did you feel like, you know, how did that kind of come about? Yeah, um, 
you know, being a player does not make you a teacher by any, by any stretch of imagination. You know, I knew it worked for me in my golf game, but trying to really add it to somebody else, um, you know, because everyone's swing is different. You know, sure. there's so many ways to get it done. And I think some of the mistakes that, you know, teachers make early on is they try to put everybody into what works for them. And that's something that, you know, my time with Craig Harmon was invaluable. Um, I spent hours and hours and hours by Craig's side watching him teach and learning from him and learning the Harmon system, you know, which obviously – uh, has translated to his brothers with Butch and Billy and sure. you know, his dad, Claude, you know, it, the whole family. And um, Craig taught me how to be a teacher. Uh, and it's so different than, than being a player. Yeah. And uh, I, it, it's, it's invaluable what, what I, what I learned from him. And to this day, I don't give a lesson without thinking of how he would look at it, to be honest. Sure. Um, and that's just basically how I teach, you know, the, yeah. you know and, and it's really cool because there's been so many professionals under Craig, uh, that have branched out to their jobs. And these are professionals I, I keep in contact with all the time. I was actually just talking to a friend of mine uh, who's at a country club in Massachusetts who we work together at Oak Hill and just talking about, you know, the fact that I was going to do this with you today and we were kind of retelling some stories and just having some laughs. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it was awesome. So it's, uh, it, it, it took time. It took a long yeah. time before I got comfortable being on a lesson tee and knowing that I was actually given the correct information and helping somebody play better. Yeah. And I think much like, uh, again, you know, obviously, in terms of teaching, you know, we teach obviously people when it comes to rehab and recovery, things like that. But I think we all have our own, we all have our own biases, right? And I think sure. like you had mentioned, you know, your golf swing works for you, but it might not necessarily work for someone that you're trying to teach. And uh, much like myself, like when we try and teach people how to move or how to train, it's not going to work for everyone, right? And as much as we want to try and bias one thing, we want to make sure that we can be open and have at least uh, and understanding that it can be done differently, right? And especially when it comes to the golf swing, there are, like you said, a number of different ways to approach it and no golf swing is the same. And as much as you want to try and pigeonhole someone into that, sometimes that might not work for them. No question. You know, one of the first questions I asked from a new, a new student is, you know, what injuries do you have? You know, what restrictions do you have that aren't going to allow you to swing the way I want you to swing? And, and you know this, and, and, you know, and Ben knows this too, how many people have sent your way to say, you know, if you, if you can get this player to get a little more hip rotation, to open up his hips a little bit, I can get him to do so much more with their swing. Right. Right. Um, so they, they, you know, they go hand in hand, uh, undoubtedly. And I'm spinning my wheels trying to get people to do something that they can't physically do that doesn't, right. doesn't work. So we have to work around that, you know, right. with our instruction. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let's do this. Let's transition. Let's uh, maybe kind of talk about, and we'll do this in a, a two-pronged approach. Maybe tell uh, the listeners maybe one thing you see golfers struggle with the most. And we'll do it from both a junior side, but also an adult side. So maybe let's kind of, kind of talk about the junior or the youth aspect golfer first, and then we'll talk about the, the adult uh, golfer second. Sure. You know, I think from the junior golfer side, you know, when I started playing, there, there wasn't the wealth of knowledge out there now in terms of, the, you know, YouTube and whatever thing, you know, what, what that has done for golf in general. Right. If you want to learn something about the golf swing, you can learn it very quickly, right. um, you know, which I think is a good thing and a bad thing. Um, uh, you know, I teach a lot of, you know, I use this for both groups, for both juniors and adults, where they come to me and, you know, I read this in Golf Digest, and it's the exact opposite of what they should be doing, right? Mm -hmm. you know, that works for, you know, you got to remember that these, these articles and all this information is put out there, but it's not tailored to you because everybody's right. different. Right. And, you know, the junior golfers, I'm a big fan of letting the juniors kill it, right? Give them a good grip and let them just, how far can they hit it? Because at right. the end of the day, speed is something that, you know, you need to develop early on. It's hard to develop it later in life. Yep. And the kids that can hit it far early on, we can get them to hit it straight and we can teach them chipping and putting, you know, and, um, you know, my son is six years old and it's drivers and putters. How far can we the driver and how good can we make, how good of a putter can I make you? Yep. Uh, everything else falls into there. Um, sure. you, if you drive it good and you putt it good, you can play golf. And so that's, you know, the junior side of things. And, you know, the adult side for most players, you know, it's some crazy percentage, 90% of golfers, you know, the slice is their, their biggest issue. Yeah. Uh, which most times translates into how they're gripping the club and their path. Um, so by far the number one thing we see with most players is, you know, for a right-handed player is that weakness to the right, uh, for left-hand player, the weakness to the left. So yeah. I spend so much of my time getting my students to, you know, to get out of that shot and, you know, get some more hit on the golf ball and get more speed and get the ball to, you know, to turn right to left for that right-handed player, which gets so much more out of it doing that. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's by far, you know, I, I, I gave a lesson last summer, one of our members, I won't use his name, but 
He's like, yep, yeah, come take a lesson. Weak grip and swing harder. I'm like, yeah, well, that's not my fault. Y'all have weak grips here. I don't just play it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. He's like, yeah, everybody said, you know, there's no the strength in your grip. Probably so. You know, Probably. so it's, uh, it's so funny. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I came here to get my grip strength and swing harder. Well, that's that's going to happen for sure. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I, I cringe when I hear my players tell me that I'm trying to swing it easier. Gosh, I just like, man, I don't see any good players swinging easy in my mind. I don't know that's why true. I want to do that, right? Especially so, nowadays, for sure. Yeah, in my opinion, like swing it hard, you get less chance to kind of mess it up, you know, just yeah. let it rip. And uh, people always get, they think it's funny when they take an instruction from other people and they come and hear me say that. And in all the times I work with Craig Harmon, never once I tell anybody, tell anybody to slow down. Not one time. In the thousands of lessons I watched, did they ever tell anybody to slow down? So, uh, yeah, I like, you know, I like a strong grip and I like speed. Listen, and that translates well to the sport of golf, right? Like you talked about, like with your baseball, I think your baseball background helped figure out your golf swing, right? And I was the same way, you know, I was a baseball kid growing up and I took up golf and it seemed to translate really well. So if you can develop speed and obviously if you've got a good, strong grip, like you said, and again, I'll give the listeners context. Like, and again, I've obviously taken some uh, instruction from Neil and um, we, we've worked on some different things together as well, but also my son, he's five and we just got him a, a small junior set and Neil's instruction was, Hey, Grip strong, swing fast, right? And I think, and I think too, like that resonates well. And when you're dealing with youth kids, and you know, sometimes maybe the intention span isn't where they need to be. If you give them a couple of cues, they usually kind of translates well to when they're trying to hit the ball, which is awesome. Exactly. Kids like swinging hard. That's fun. Right. Absolutely. All right. So let's do this. Let's transition to our, our what's in the bag segment, right? So especially coming from a PGA uh, instructor and someone who's played at a high level, I think a lot of golfers like to know what, let's say, professionals like yourself are, are swinging. So maybe let's talk about a little bit of what, what you're utilizing in your bag, either from like an iron set, driver set, putters, whatever you got. Sure. Um, you know, I'm a Titleist guy. I've been a Titleist guy since I was a kid. Sure. Uh, I was fortunate, again, early on, um, I, I was able to play pretty well pretty quickly. And as a junior golfer, our Titleist rep, took care of me on my first set of irons and he locked me in. So I've been, I've, I've been a Titleist brand ambassador um, for gosh, over 20 years now. And um, I love the brand. I think it's the number one brand in golf. I think, you know, from the golf ball um, onwards, they, they make the best stuff. Uh, in my bag, you know, I've, I've upgraded to these TS fairway woods, which I think are really, really awesome. It was a huge change for them. Uh, move away from the 917 line into this TS2. Uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that. And then the new irons, the T-100 the series irons. Uh, I got the T-100s in my bag now. Um, I play a Project X 6.5 shaft. I can't get out of it. I played it since college and I try every year to do something different because I don't think I swing as hard anymore, but for some reason that shaft just works for me. <laughs> I don't hit it as far as I used to, but for some reason I can't get out of that Project X shaft. Um, you know, I tried everything lighter and this and that, but for some reason I keep always going back to that. And, you know, I'm a Vokey wedge guy. Uh, I carry four Vokey wedges. I go 46, 50, 56, 60, um, you know, kind of different bounces. Um, one of the things I was out in California a couple of years ago, uh, get fit at the Titleist facility, which is a really cool experience. Sure. And they put me in a couple of things that I would not put myself in. And I've, I've carried through, you know, my 60 degree wedge has a ton of bounce on it, which I wouldn't have normally thought about. Um, but, you know, up here in upstate New York, where we play in wet conditions for a good part of the year. Uh, more balance has been has been actually really good for my wedge game. Sure. And you know the putter is a funny story. Um, I've been a Scotty Cameron Newport guy forever, and yeah. I actually when I was out in California, um, I got fit by by Scotty's first assistant, and and um, he tried so hard to put me in the mallet. And this is two years ago. And I'm like, I can't look at this thing, man. I can't look at this mallet. <laughs> I knew it. And uh, my numbers were so much better with the mallet. But it's just you know putting is so much feel and aesthetics. Yeah. And, but of course now I'm playing a mallet because eventually I was like, I, if I'm going to make more plus, I got to get over this somehow. So I switched, I switched to that mallet and uh, I'm still not that great of a putter, but I do make more putts now than I used to. There you go. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's great. Yeah. I think you said, like, like you said, golf, and not only just putting, but I think golf in general is a field sport, right? So yep. I mean, if you gravitate towards a certain shaft and you feel comfortable with it, regardless of you know, what they try and give you, that's maybe better or, or maybe more improved. Sometimes you just gravitate towards what's comfortable for you, you know? It's, it's, it's totally true, especially with irons. And, you know, and, and on the other side of the bag, you know, I carry a four iron and I work into a 19 degree hybrid. And, you know, there was a time when I had a one iron in my bag, you know, back in the day. It's amazing to me yeah. how that has shifted, you know, so dramatically where, you know, we, we, we fit so many people for irons here. I think, you know, we do a ton of fittings and, yeah. how, you know, three through wedge is now five through gap wedge. You know, we don't even sell many four irons anymore. The hybrids are so good. Right. 
Um, so yeah, I, tell, tell us maybe yeah. kind of about your experience with, let's say, transitioning people from, let's say, the higher iron to a hybrid. I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on that? And um, I know that obviously, especially as the golfer maybe ages, you know, you know the hybrid becomes a little bit more of a, a better club to go through. But, you know, what are your thoughts on, let's say, you know, still carrying, let's say, a three iron or fire, four iron versus, let's say, a hybrid? Yeah, um, you know, the hybrid is so significantly more forgiving. And even with the technology we have in the irons now that are, you know, as far and above what it used to be, um, you know, I don't know if you can get a three iron anymore. And some of these things, quite honest, I don't even try to order them. I'm not sure if they're available. Uh, and uh, even the foreign, I've, you know, I've, I've had players that have been playing, you know, blades or whatever else for their whole life. And you try moving to hybrid and they're so far against it. Yeah. Uh, I gave a lesson to a gentleman last year. He's like, you know, I'm struggling with my five iron. I can't get my five iron. And I'm like, all right, let's see what's going on. And I put a 27 degree hybrid in their hand and it was like night and day. He's like, why am I just hitting this? I'm like, I don't know why you're not hitting <laughs> You should be. <laughs> so it was, uh, it's like, oh, you're trying to sell me a club. I'm like, I'm just giving you an option. Here's an option. Let's try right. this. And it was, it's amazing how many 27 degree hybrids we sold over the past couple of years because it's such a, you know, the, the sole of the club uh, being so thick just goes through the grass so much better than an iron does. Yeah. Uh, and for your average player that's not hitting a thousand balls a day and playing once a week if they're lucky and maybe hitting balls once in a while, I mean, why not get something forgiving? It's kind yeah. of a, kind of a no-brainer um right. so yeah no i I'm, I'm a huge fan of those hybrids so we're i think eventually you're going to see it work even more maybe into a six iron start versus a five iron that's pretty, uh, that's pretty that's incredible, gonna incredible when you think about it too right i mean it's, it's crazy to think about all these all these head covers in your bag now it's <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> about losing head covers and actually playing the sport of golf <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our shotgun round right so this is the lightning round we're gonna ask you a number of questions you can think about the first thing that comes to your mind. You should answer that way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's go with favorite golfer. You know, I like any golfer that's exciting. Um, now, you know, again, I grew up when Tiger started coming on. Yeah. Um, I think these young guys is Justin Thomas. I love Justin Thomas. I think he's so great for golf. You know, Jordan Spieth, you know, even though I know Jordan's been struggling a little bit, I think he's on the cusp of coming back really strong. I really, really do. He's kind of figuring out the golf swing again. And, yeah. um, you know, he, he made some changes to get better that, like a lot of golfers have done and it kind of went the other direction, but I think he's finding his way back. Um, so I think, I think golfers that create excitement. I, I love those guys. and it's great for golf. That's awesome. All right. So we obviously know that your favorite golf brand is Titleist, but how about like clothing wise, or is there something that you kind of gravitate towards from, gravitate towards with the, from, from a clothing standpoint? Yeah. Not to, not to leave off the Titleist band. Like I'm definitely a foot joy guy. I've been on there, you know, one of their brand ambassadors for a long time. Um, yeah. I, I think they make great, you know, one of the new brands we brought in this year, the, uh, the shop is called Grayson. Uh, it's been out for a few years now. Okay. Um, I'm really excited about this brand. It's, it's a really high tech fabrics. Um, it's, it's really cool. You see some cool. guys on tour wearing it. So I think that's going to be great for the shop this year. All right. Great. And shout out to Grayson. That's awesome. All right. So how about like preferred drink or snack while you're playing? Uh, again, drink can be alcohol, non-alcohol snacks. If you do, what do you prefer? You know, yeah, I'm kind of boring on that. I'm a, I'm a banana and water guy. Not, <laughs> not, not to be too exciting on that one. Um, you know, when I'm playing, if I'm going to a tournament, there's a peanut butter and jelly in my bag and a banana and, and a water. Um, there you go. I don't know. I know that's kind of the most exciting answer in the world. <laughs> now, listen, sometimes when you keep it simple, it's better off that way, right? I was playing in a tournament uh, with a friend of mine a few years ago, and we made the turn. And, you know, I went in the, in the snack shop and grabbed an apple, and he grabbed a beer and a hamburger. And, you know, one of the other guys would play with me goes, one of the better players in this group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you can tell what a person grabs from on the turn there, right? He'll know who this is when he watches this. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's your preference, par three or par five? Par five, 100%. Yeah. No question. Yeah. Huh. Just, uh, I have a hard time laying up, regardless of where my tee shot goes. So. <laughs> I'm the same way, right? With that whole grip and rip mentality, <laughs> that's, that's kind of how I kind of gravitate towards that as well. Or, uh, how about uh, part or walk? Oh, man, you know, I love to walk, uh, but unfortunately these days with how busy I am at the club, most of my rounds are played in about two hours if I'm lucky. So uh, my golf cart here at Cobblestone goes faster than everybody else's just so I can play faster. So unfortunately, it's a lot of cart rounds when I do get a chance to play. Um, but there's nothing better in golf than walking with a caddy. That's the best way to do it, in my opinion. But Absolutely. yeah, these days, uh, it's out of the shop in a cart, zip around and that kind of and, lesson usually and i can attest to that neil's cart goes quickly and he is <laughs> flying around the course most days from during the summer when golf is in full swing there's no question about that all right what's your preference for movie caddyshack or happy gilmore caddyshack not even close yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how about uh favorite golf memory favorite golf memory you know uh definitely with my dad um you know when 
the time spent at the private country club with my dad are, are some of my fondest memories. And a funny story I'll share with you, we were playing the father's son at a course in Syracuse and you know, it's a, it's a modified alternate shot. So you both drive and either I'm hitting his second shot or he's hitting mine, right? Kind of the way it works. And uh, we get out there and it's either me hitting a three iron or he was hitting a nine iron, right? Because obviously I, you know, back then hit it a lot farther than he did. Right. And there's a bunker in front of the green. And uh, I go, yeah, I'll hit the three iron. I'll knock it on you, make the putt. What are you talking about? I had the nine iron. I mean, come on, I I got this. And he gets up there and he hits the nine iron. Man, he plugged it right in the front of that bunker. I was so mad. You know, here I am, 16 years old. Which I wasn't. Uh, I was so upset. He looked at me. He's like, "Don't say a word, okay? I won't say a word." So <laughs> Just no don't even. I'm like, I would have three iron in the green for sure. Your nine iron plugs in the face of the bunker. I was so mad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that was uh, that was fun. <laughs> I think a lot of those memories helped shape you, kind of, especially and obviously what you've got kids now too. I think. It, it gives you an opportunity to kind of look back at those memories and really kind of hopefully enjoy that with your kids as well, too. That's awesome. Oh, for sure. I can't wait for that. Yes. All right. So last question we'll ask is, you know, someone who is someone you'd recommend we reach out to, to be a guest on the show? You know, um, I've been so lucky uh, in, in my career to be influenced by so many people. I think one of the things that's interesting here in upstate New York is uh, John Graham, uh, who is quickly becoming one of the putting gurus on the PGA Tour, uh, right. lives in Webster, New York very funny you know and John's a very good friend of mine he teaches here at the club uh he's someone that I think would be great to have on your show you know he is a, a his knowledge of putting uh he know I, I've you know he's probably forgotten more than I know in terms of putting but it's a really cool guy uh so knowledgeable so he'd be my recommendation for you awesome that's great we'll definitely have to reach out to John and see if we can get him on the show for sure all right so let's kind of finish up with this so for Neil for those who maybe um want to learn more about you or, or what you're doing in terms of instruction. I mean, what's the best way to reach out and contact you directly? Yeah, you know, I'd go right to the Cobblestone Creek website, uh, cobblestonecreekcc.com. Uh, all of my information's on there. Um, it's uh, everything you want to know about Cobblestone. You can kind of, you can find on there and my email's on there and I'm great on email. If any questions, shoot me an email, I'll get back to you. Awesome. And again, like I said, guys, um, you know, we've been fortunate enough and honored to be able to kind of work with Neil closely hand in hand for the last two years. Uh, myself, Neil, and then obviously our fitness director, Ben, uh, we've kind of formed obviously this integrative model where you know, I think in Rochester, where the golf season's short, right, people want to be able to uh, get out and play golf and, and play at a high level. So, you know, hopefully we at Cobblestone um, provide that experience for them so that if they are dealing with stuff, we have the team in place to be able to have them still stay on the golf course and not have to worry about waiting for things to kind of calm down. So um, I, like I said, personally have taken uh, a, a lessons from Neil and he's a wealth of knowledge and we're so grateful to have him on the show. So Neil, thanks so much for your time, man. Thanks for carving out a little bit of time of, of, of your day to kind of spend with us. Um, thanks so much for listening to the pain-free golf performance podcast. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks Russ.